You often mention disciplining children so they behave. What is your advice for making them behave without resorting to corporal punishment? Well, first of all, it depends on what you mean by corporal punishment. Um, time out could be regarded as corporal punishment. It also depends very much on the age of the child. Um, let's say a two-year-old. Well, in my new book, by the way, I have a chapter in there called Don't Let Your Children Do Anything That Makes You Dislike Them. And the reason that I wrote a chapter about that is because people who let their children do things that make them dislike them end up disliking them. And because there's a huge power differential, generally speaking, between adults and children, if you end up disliking your children because they're not behaving well, uh, they're behaving disgracefully, say, or they're, or they're uh, challenging your position in the authority hierarchy too regularly, uh, something you won't put up with, by the way, even if you think you will, it's necessary to get your disciplinary routine straight. So the first thing I would say is figure out what the rules are. There shouldn't be too many um, for two-year-olds, basically. They have to know what no means, and they also have to learn as they approach three not to kick, hit, bite, or steal, essentially. Now, it's easy to train a two-year-old what no means. You can actually start with a child that's only 13 months old, a child that can cry, let's say that, or that can crawl. Let's say that you have a child that's starting to crawl and wants to explore the house. So the first thing you do, if you have any sense, is try to get rid of most things that the child could cause a tremendous amount of trouble with uh, to, to the things or to the child so that it's reasonably safe. Um, and then the child is going to want to want to crawl around and get into everything. And so, but maybe there are things you don't want him or her to get into. Like maybe there is a, uh, oh, what would we say? Maybe there's a tablecloth and on top of the tablecloth there's a plant. Or maybe there's some plants on the floor. And when the child is crawling and goes off to do something that he or she shouldn't, um, you can just grab his leg and, you know, gently but firmly and say no. And the child will keep trying to move forward because they're stubborn little blighters and you can continue to say no. And if you persist with saying no, then the child will eventually give up and sort of go limp. Now, now, and often the child will cry when you do that. And of course that might make you feel guilty, but what that means is that you've effectively brought the behavior to a halt. And if you do that 10 times, you got to watch your child and don't, stop them from exploring things that they need to explore and you want to use this sort of thing with judiciously you can grab them by the leg and say no and no no and wait until they give up usually they'll cry and then you can let them go and then soon after you do that about 10 times soon then if you just say no with the same tone of voice the child will generally what happens the child will immediately cry and then stop and then after about 10 repeats of no without having the leg grabbed then no will just produce stopping of the behavior and that's unbelievably useful because as soon as you you train your child to understand what no means then they really have free reign of the house in some sense with relative minimal supervision from you first of all they can learn what things they're not supposed to get into and it's amazing how fast children can learn that and how fast they can generalize to the class of things that they shouldn't get into like you don't have to teach them every single thing they can generalize very rapidly that's not much different than thinking but also once they are capable of understanding what no means you have an extremely potent means of helping them regulate their behavior with a minimum of intervention so that's unbelievably useful. So now let's say you have a two-year-old who's pretty contentious and two-year-olds are pretty contentious, some of them in particular, because about 5% of two-year-olds, most of them are male, are quite aggressive by temperament. And those are the ones that if you put with other two-year-olds will frequently kick, hit, bite, or steal. Not all kids are like that, but some are. And most of them get socialized out of that by the time they're about four. Now let's say you have, and at two, they also start to experiment with saying no uh, back and also with misbehaving, although they can do that even younger than that. So if you have a two-year-old who's particularly rambunctious and who decides he isn't going to listen to you, we use he in this example because it's boys that are more likely to misbehave and not, uh, and not listen. You can, you can pick them up and, you know, by the arms. Now, you got to get your attitude right because you don't want to be stupid. You don't want to let your kid make you mad, especially when they're really little because you're really big 
and you can hurt them. And so you gotta you gotta have a, a clue. That's why you want to get the rules of discipline in order, the minimum rules of discipline, and why you want to have a strategy. But let's say your two two year old is insisting upon doing something that you don't want him to do, like. Uh, inserting a fork into an electrical outlet and you just can't have that and so you can say no hopefully you've already done the no training that I recommended and then and if that doesn't work what I recommend doing is picking the child up by the arms and then putting them on the steps say look you sit there until you're ready to listen now um, Oh, usually the child will sit there and then the rule has to be something like you can get up as soon as you're ready to be a civilized human being again and you can refer to yourself your own attitude during a process like that because if the child does comply and sits on the steps and then comes and says I'm ready to be good and you like him again you got to be honest about this then you can tell that he's honest in his decision to rejoin the civilized world now, sometimes if you put a two-year-old that's particularly rambunctious on the staircase, then as soon as you let go of their arms, they'll run off. And that can be a game or it can just be an act of defiance. And in that case, then you go get them and you put them back on the steps. And you do that several times if necessary. And if that, that becomes a game, then you sit on the step and you hold him by the arms. Remember, no anger because he's just two for God's sake. You know, you don't have to be angry. Just put him on the steps and hold him. Say, look, I'm not letting you go until you sit there and behave and so if you hold him for a while he'll squirm and look away and so forth but you can get his attention if you're a little bit stubborn you hold him there and say you're gonna sit there till I decide that you can leave and so you hold him and he'll squirm and but you can outweigh him if you're patient but you gotta make the time and then eventually he'll stop squirming and you can let him go and then you can sit there and watch him and when you think he's you know decided that He's going to be a civilized creature then you can say that's good and you can give him a pat on the head and you can say let's go back and do what we're doing and the rule has to be you see that the punishment not only has to bring the behavior to a halt in the most merciful manner possible but that's still effective but it also has to satisfy your need for order and justice so that you don't carry resentment and irritation about the child's misbehavior forward with you because you don't want to kid yourself about what sort of nice person you are you're not nearly as nice a person as you think and no one likes to be um, brought down the authority hierarchy by a recalcitrant two-year-old so in almost all circumstances those processes will suffice um, there's other disciplinary strategies that you can use too that are more positive I mean one of the things that you can do for example if you're Let's say you want to get your child to go to bed, which is a really good idea. You should set a stable bedtime for your child. And I would say if they're under four, it should be around eight or seven or something like that because you want to have a life and you want to have a life with your wife so that you don't end up hating your child. And so one of the things you can do if you want to train your child to go to bed at eight, so maybe he's not going to bed until 10 right now and you want to fix that. So you say, okay, go to the grocery store or a little convenience store and buy 10 little gifts. And they can be cheap. Kids don't care. They're not very bright, you know. You can fool them. So buy 10 little things that you think your kid would like and wrap them up. And then put them up on a shelf where he can see them but can't get at them. And then you say, look, kid, I'm going to put you to bed at 9.30 tonight. And uh, if you don't get out of bed, then I'm going to give you one of these I'm going to give you one of these gifts in the morning. So, or if the, or you can do it another way too. If the child is always giving you a rough time about getting ready for bed and going to bed, you can say, look, if you're, if you put on your pajamas without fussing and you climb into bed, then I'll give you one of these little gifts. And so then if that works, then the child can have a little gift and he's in bed at 9.30 and then you can make it 9 and then you can make it 8.30 and then you can make it 8. And you, those are called, that's called successive approximation, right? You hit the target. You specify the target that you want the child to achieve and then you use small rewards, not too often, in order to a attain that goal. And those are unbelievably effective strategies and they can actually be pretty fun. But I would say the advice to not let your child do anything that makes you dislike them is really really useful um, you want to talk this over with your partner too so that you have your disciplinary strategies and your rules talked out so that you don't work across purposes to one another so okay so that's probably good enough for that